For this lesson, we are going to be solving one-step subtraction equations. We will be using positive and negative numbers. Notice problems one through three, if you have not learned integers yet, which integers are positive and negative, these are examples of just all positive numbers. This is a subtraction sign. But when we get down to the next one, you'll see that we do have positive and negative numbers. So if you've learned integers, these are the problems that you would be interested in. But all of them are a good review. So let's look at the problem. We know, first of all, when we're solving equations, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So what I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do for the each problem, just to get the problems ready, I'm going to draw a little line. That rem is going to remind me that on this side of the equation, I've got to do something, and whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Whoops, I put that one in the wrong place. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the first problem. We have m minus 15 is equal to 20. So I know the inverse operation of subtraction is addition. I am going to add 15 to both sides of the equation. And I know I've done my work right because I have a pair of opposites in front of my face. And when I have a pair of opposites, this cancels out. It turns into a zero. I don't have to write the zero. So I'm just going to write M is equal to, and now I'm just going to add 20 plus 15, and the answer is 35. If we substitute 35 into the equation, 35 minus 15 is equal to 20. That definitely is a way to check your work. So let's look at number two. We have 25 is equal to x minus 20. So again, I'm always going to use the inverse operation, and I've got to get the variable alone. So I am going to add 20 to both sides of the equation. And when I do, if I owed someone $20, I paid $20 back. I don't owe them anything. So this is a pair of opposites. And we get x is equal to a 25 plus 20 is 45. And again, I just drew this little squiggly line so that you can see I am doing what I do to one side of the equation, I do to the other. You might be saying to yourself, you know, I don't need to go ahead and to show those steps. I can do it in mental math. But you are going to be learning more complex problems, so showing this one step is really important to prepare you for the future. So let's look at number three. We have y minus 12 equals 50. So I see that I have a 12 here, so I am going to add 12 to both sides. That's the inverse operation. And when I do the inverse operation, I have a pair of opposites in front of my face, so they cancel out. They're gone. So it is going to be y is equal to a 2 and a 6, so it is 62. Again, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other for every problem that we work. All right, well, let's look at our problems for four to six. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my line that's going to separate the two sides of the equation. So that sends a signal to me, whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. And we always want to get our variable alone. So this is x minus 5 equals a negative 15. So that is a minus, a negative, um, it's a minus 5. So we're going to add the opposite of negative 5. And I'm thinking, my brain keeps thinking about this as a negative 5. You see that we can call this x minus 5, or we can consider that like a negative 5. So now it is x is equal to, this is where you have to remember your integer rules. I have a negative and I have a positive. So when the signs are different, the, there's a little subtraction problem that you need to know. So the subtraction problem is going to be 15 minus 5 because the signs are different. And we know that that is 10. 
So I'm writing a 10 here, but now you've got to look, which one did you have more of? Did you have more of the negatives or the positives? Well, I hope you said the negatives because the answer is a negative 10. And again, you can substitute it into the equation to check that. So let's look at the next one. We have a negative 33 equals C minus 11. The inverse operation for subtraction is addition, and that will give me, notice, a pair of opposites. So I've got to add 11 to, notice, both sides of my equation. And this does cancel out, so I get C is equal to, well, I have a negative 33 and I have 11. So again, signs are opposite, so I've got to go ahead and I'm going to subtract 33 minus 11, and you can see that that is a 22. And now let's see what sign it's gonna be. Which one do I have more of? Well, I have more negatives, so it's a negative 22 is your answer. Your answers won't always be negative. It just so happens the numbers that I picked, um, it ends up working out this way. So let's look at the next one. It's negative 2 and 5 tenths equals n minus 6 and 63 hundredths. So again, whatever is near the variable, we are going to have to, um, for this problem, add this number to both sides so that the variable has to be alone. That's always our goal. So it is plus 6 and 63 hundredths, and this one is going to be plus 6 and 63 hundredths. And now, notice when I am going ahead and I am working these problems, I, again, here's this cancels out, I get n is equal to, and now I have a negative two and five tenths and a positive, this is positive, six and 63 hundredths. So this is my brain thinking about it. When you have a positive and a negative integer, you have to subtract. So I'm gonna write six and 63 hundredths, and I'm gonna subtract away two and five tenths. Are you noticing that I am lining up my decimal points? You must be sure to do that. Sometimes when you write it in your problem, you can't do it, but definitely when you're working the problem, you need to. So three minus zero is three, six minus five is one, bring my decimal point down, six minus two is four, and now I am gonna write that, four and 13 hundredths. Now, which do I have more of? Do I have more of the positive six and 63 hundredths or more negative two and five tenths? Well, there definitely is more positive. So this one answer is a positive and it's four and 13 hundredths. All you have to do is really remember whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. If this video was helpful to you today, Please add a like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more math with Marsha. See you again soon.